Hey everybody and welcome to Trivia Rogues Garage Cast. <laughs> Trivia Rogues Dark Cast. Trivia Rogues Ambiance Cast. Uh, so we are back, but we are doing the social distancing thing in a way. Um, yeah. We are we are plenty of uh, feet feet apart from each other in my garage, my uh, um, storage garage, unattached garage, whatever. The garage door is up. Someone's weed whacking in the next yard. There are cars going by, but motorcycles, you and Dan helicopters. Your, your greeting and hug less than six seconds, which was great. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, our our kiss was less saliva than usual. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we're we're back to do our normal thing, uh, which is interesting because we've had our topics done before all this madness started. Uh, so, might be a little stale on the. Uh, Delivery? Delivery. <laughs> I don't even know what mine's about. I'm literally going to be reading off a sheet. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Um, but yeah, we're, we're back at it. Is, is this the first time we've done this since Don? Was Don like not there the last time we recorded? Well, I don't know if he wasn't there, but we ran out of time, I think, for his thing. Mm-hmm. Like we went, our stuff went wrong. Uh, was it the time before that we actually, you know, used oh, the? There's uh, a good one. The cell phone. Yeah, there's the. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Look, listen yeah. to that. What was that? Is that a motorcycle? That oh, was yeah. a motorcycle. That one's not. Uh, there was a one twice as loud just went by about 10 minutes ago <laughs> uh so anyway we apologize if there's any uh no we don't vi- well yeah yeah you forget it deal with all it all right all right so let's let's go ahead and jump into the, to the set, uh, topics for today and uh jeff's gonna start and if you hear stuff in the background that is just because the door's open and we're doing our best to bring you stuff all right well without further ado since we had no ado there or very little ado um, Much ado about nothing. That too. Let me ask you guys a couple uh, relatively simple quiz questions, at least for half of you. Uh, the English language movie franchise with the most films to date is what? Oh, franchise. Engl- English language English. movie franchise. Hmm. I mean, the first thing that jumps is James, James Bond. Bond. You would think the fact that I said this is going to be easier for Billy than you, that would be another clue. Ah. <laughs> yep. James Bond, how many films have there been? 27. 27 if you count the two that weren't actually part of the franchise, yes. 25 actual Bond films. That does not include the that that's released, because I think yeah. they're working on one, right? The 25th is what was going to be released and has been held up. Mm. The, the, oh, the, is it is it done? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, was, it, it was supposed to come out, but they didn't release it because of yeah. the oh. Rona. Yeah. They wanted more than two people in the audience when they when they filmed it. Um, yeah, and there were, then there were two. Small theater. Right. There were two, one was a uh, um, a send up with uh, David Niven, and then actually um, Sean Connery um, came back oh, yeah. in, a, in a yeah the first Casino Royale, right? Was yeah. No, never say never, which was a play on him having said never mm-hmm. he would ever do Bond again. So that was the the movie he did, and it was sort of a a send up. So anyway, so there's been 25 actually in the franchise, 27 total. Uh, the first Bond movie. Eon production? Yes. Dr. No. That's correct. You know how many different actors have portrayed Bond? Not including the David Niven one. Yeah, uh, so if it's Eon Productions, Five? then you have Connery, yes. Roger Moore. Yes. That doesn't sound like Roger Moore. You gotta, you gotta do your uh, Roger no, Moore I'm, impression. I'm just, I'm just doing all. No, you gotta do Roger uh, Moore impression. Who's next, though? <laughs> <laughs> uh, then after that was. Uh, wait. Was it after that, or was Lazenby before? Lazenby was before. Yeah, okay. So Lazenby, then Roger Moore, then <laughs> Timothy Dalton, and then Pierce Brosnan, I like Dalton. then Daniel Craig. So six. That's correct. And who uh, betrayed him most often? Uh, Who's got Connery. the most credits? I did not no. like, I did Roger not like Moore. Lazenby. Roger Moore's got a ton of movies, man. Roger yeah. Moore has one more than uh, Connery. Yeah. He had seven. Connery Because didn't six. Connery come back? Like, well, he... Yeah, yeah, he for one. he was gone. Yeah, for one, and then Lazenby took his place, and then Connery came back after that. And that's when he said he would never do it again. Right. But then he came back for Never Say Never. So boom, and he didn't do it anyway. Right. <laughs> uh, what was the first Bond book published? Casino Royale. Casino Royale. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm guessing this is going to be real simple for you. But who was the author of that? Uh, one Mister Ian Fleming. And that's exactly what my topic is going to be about today. I'm going to tell you about Ian Fleming. Oh, nice. awesome. Thought you might enjoy that. Um, Talk about uh, his cool house. <laughs> we'll be talking about a lot of things that were cool. He's got, he's Where got, is he in the Bahamas or something? He yeah. spent a lot of time. In the, well, I don't, I don't think he, he's obviously English, but 
Um, I think he spent a lot of time in uh, the Bahamas. Gotcha. You know what? We'll probably talk about that. Perhaps. <laughs> Just in case you're wondering. I didn't think I was going to skip all that stuff. Um, <laughs> well, we didn't know. You, you wrote this so long ago. Yeah. <laughs> We're trying I to did. help you. We're trying to spark your memory. Um, it's kind of dark in here. I wasn't sure if you could see the paper. Yeah. I can. Okay. I can actually see both of you, too. Oh, wow. <laughs> all the way in your dark corners. Yeah. Um, Ian Lancaster Fleming was born May 28th. Can you even see me flipping 1908. you off in Yes. Okay. I mean, yes. <laughs> and yes, he was born in London, England. Yeah. Uh, he died in 1964 in August. At the, uh, I want to make. I guess it makes him about 58 years old. 59? No, 58. Um, we'll trust you. <laughs> yeah, take your word for it. My math is rusty as well. <laughs> he hasn't. He hasn't done math in court. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he uh, social distancing from math. <laughs> I social distance pretty much from anything I could social distance from. <laughs> I was telling Don before you got here that my, my biggest regret about this whole stay-at-home order is it wasn't a stay-in-home order. Because <laughs> I would feel a lot less guilty about the fact that I haven't done anything in the yard. You know, it'd be, yeah. ni- it'd be nice to be so I, I can't go out. Sorry. Yeah. Yard work is the worst. It is the worst. I, I walked to their house just so that, you know, uh, just to say hi from the driveway, you know. Mm-hmm. and Because Evie is, like, sick of just seeing him. Can I see somebody else? Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. but um, Not quite like that. Sunburned. <laughs> I'm already sunburned. Yep. Well, you're very Irish, so. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. That's okay. You guys seem to be having fun. It's nice to hear you guys are actually together it's again. Been, it's been so long since we've all been talking. Yeah, oh, by the way, um, Rachel was working today. Yes. So, you know, she'll, she'll be back eventually, though. I'm glad she's actually got a job. Yeah. Here when so many people don't have jobs or lose yeah, jobs, she, she actually she was got able a to job. get one. Yeah. Good yeah. For her. Yep. <clears throat> Um, Mr. Fleming was the son of a conservative MP and the grandson of a Scottish banker. Uh, he was born into a family of wealth and privilege. Wait, so were, they were both Scottish, did you say, or one of them was Scottish? He was a grandson of a Scottish banker. Okay. His dad was from England. That's interesting. Because I, I think... Uh, we'll get to bu- that. I think... Bu- okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Slow your roll. <laughs> You know, I, he asked me, which one do you think is going to go longer? And I said the first one. Why? That's why. There I, you go. I knew you are himself, welcome, sir. He'll be intervening the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so Ian was uh, educated in England, Germany, and Switzerland. Um, he became a journalist, went to Moscow from 29 to 33. He was a banker and stockbroker from 35 to 39. Became a high-ranking officer in the British Naval Intelligence during World War II and a foreign manager of the London Sunday Times from 1945 to 1949. So he had quite the background. Hmm. Um, and that's when he, 49 is when he decided to become a full-time writer. Um, during his years Oh, I have got time yet. What's that? I still have time. Yeah, because he was uh, 41. <laughs> he said 49. In 49. Oh, in 49. Yeah, oh, after, okay. After the war. But he was 41, though? Yes. Oh, well, then beautiful. Do you have time? Um, of course, you've got a lot to do. He was a banker, stockbroker. He was in uh, <clears throat> yeah, naval yeah. intelligence. Yeah, well, uh, the foreign manager of the London t- London Sunday Times. London Times. Mm-hmm. London. Please make me feel worse. There we go. <laughs> I knew, but I knew we'd mix I, some words together. I today. am trying to write a fantasy novel, and I've watched a lot of fantasy stuff, played a lot of fantasy video games. That's not a motorcycle. Yes, so it is. No, that's it wasn't. kind that was, of that was a fantasy cycle. Oh wow, I'm getting good. I'm hearing stuff in my head. Yeah, is that a good thing or a bad? thing? I think thing? you've been hearing voices oh, for some time. <laughs> Um, during his years at Naval Intelligence, he obtained the rank of lieutenant, moving on to become a commander. Um, he was the full-time assistant of the director, the right-hand man of Admiral Jeff- John Godfrey, who was a top British spymaster. So he had a lot of first-hand knowledge about the spy game. Mm. Um, all the while plotting and executing dangerous missions, he fed his imagination, uh, stored all this stuff up. A lot of his experiences were later reflected as in, in his adventures of... Uh, his adventurous James Bond tales. Uh, towards the end of his career as a secret agent, he discovered the beautiful island of Jamaica. Um, away from war, full of peace and pleasure, he would later build a house there, and that's where he would write all the Bond novels. Um, after retiring, <laughs> what a retirement he had, too. Uh, he started building his new career in his home in Jamaica. Um, after retiring, he started his career. <laughs> yeah. Well, it was leisurely. Wait till you hear how he retired, though. Um, the house was huge, but it was really simple. No air conditioning, no hot or plumbing. He named the house Goldeneye, yeah. no. which was a, 
a wartime operation he'd been involved in. So sweet. For six years, Mm -hmm. he followed the routine of arriving at GoldenEye in the first week of January and then leaving for England about the first week of March. He would come to Jamaica to relax his nerves, romance women, enjoy the Jamaican sunset, until a married woman that he was having a little uh, little affair with uh, got pregnant. Oh! So uh, that was Lady Anne Rothmere. Um, she became pregnant with his child, and he decided at the age of 44 that maybe it was time to be uh, grow up a little bit. He uh, wrote his first novel, Casino Royale, while waiting in Jamaica for her divorce to become final and uh, to get married to her. Hmm. So... Uh, Casino Royale was actually published in 1953. It was the first of 12 James Bond novels, packed with violent action, hair breadth. I mean, I think everybody knows all this, but for those who might not know what Bond is like, um, violent action, escapes, international espionage, clever spy gadgets, intrigue, oh, yeah. gorgeous women. Uh, the books became international bestsellers. A lot of torture. <laughs> yeah, Fleming's Bond novels weren't initially big movers in the American bookstores. I don't know if you knew that, but it wasn't until about 1961, uh, John F. Kennedy put a list of his 10 favorite books out, mm. and Russia, uh, From Russia With Love was on there. Instantly, that became a bestseller in the United States, and that pretty much wow. brought his success to the United States. His, his books are, his books are um, they're definitely dated with how Bond treats women. Um, it's kind of hard to read some of it, but then again, looking at some of the movies from the sixties, I mean, he's mm-hmm. like backhanding women, you know, but there is a, there is a sophistication in the way that Fleming writes though. Mm-hmm. Um, not, you know, Casino obviously- Royale was good. Yeah. And it, it's good. That's I didn't read saying. any like, of the other ones. But... Aside, aside from the really like, like hard to read parts with, with, you know, the sexism or whatever that is, mm-hmm. you know, but the, like the actual, like, the spy parts and like the you know at the like at the casinos, it's actually very well written. It's well written. It's not as um, gimmicky as the films. I feel like no, it's a lot more realistic. Right. Um, for most of it, there's part in Doctor No. That's uh, little they're little not. Time. They're not like jumping Aston Martins onto boats. I'm to my knowledge. Did James Bond jump an Aston Martin onto a boat? Probably at some point. <laughs> I don't know. I think he bounced it off the back of a shark before he did that. But I'm they sure. do some. They do some <laughs> ridiculous stuff. In Run, those. Running across alligators. Yeah. So oh, anyway, yeah. in after this, you know, Kennedy made his pronouncement. Um, he became a literary star on this side of the pond, and it was that summer, the summer sixty or sixty one, that they started uh, production on the very first uh, Bond film, which was Doctor No. Yes. Um, at that point, he and Kennedy actually started getting a little bit chummy. Um, the author and the oh, uh, I do have a fan. And, and <laughs> Kennedy had, had met at a dinner party in 1960, and Kennedy actually asked Fleming on advice for how to discredit and topple Fidel asked Castro. Thought maybe Fidel send, send my imaginary uh, spy to go take care of him. Um, and here's a little bit of trivia for you: From Russia with, Lo- with Love was the last movie that Kennedy saw in 1963. He saw it the night before he was uh, assassinated. Really? Yeah. Wow. In the, um, wow. Yeah, that's. So Bond had a propensity for gambling, fast cars. He became the prototype of handsome, clever playboy hero of the 50s and 60s. He was the symbol in the West of a burgeoning consumer age, indulging in only the best brand-name products and enjoying access to the foremost electronic gadgets of his day. A lot of the readers, that incessant name-dropping of commercial products was off-putting, but the tactic enabled Fleming to create a, a realism unusual in popular fiction of that day. His mannerisms, quirks from the way he liked his martinis. How? Well, depends. Not stir, there you go. Isn't it? The, isn't it different in the book? I don't think he orders it very often. I know he drinks a lot of bourbon in the books. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, to the way he introduced himself, which was, um, hey, what up? New phone. Who dis? Bond. Thank you, Sean. James Bond. Um. Anyway, James all Bond. those catchphrases, stuff like James that, made Bond. him famous around the world. Um, all of the novels were made into popular motion pictures, although many deviated from the uh, original plots. Spoiler alert, at the end of Dr. No, the book, Bond pretty much gets dumped in a tank with a giant octopus. Vodka martini. <laughs> Shaken. Not stuck. Yeah, he was just, he just drunk a lot. Um, as Billy alluded to, uh, the books were roundly criticized. 